Hello students, today you're going to take Cornell Notes on Activation Energy. Go ahead up and set up your notebook, pause the video if you need a minute, and then we'll start in a couple seconds. Just like usual, I'll provide the first question for you, and then you do the rest, and then don't forget the summary and the advanced question as well. Alright, let's begin. Activation Energy. So whenever you have a chemical reaction, you need energy to begin that chemical reaction, to break the bonds of the reactants. And several factors can influence the activation energy, which we'll get to in this video. For the first one, you can write, what is activation energy, since it's a definition? Or you can be a little bit more creative and use this other question, what can influence activation energy? Feel free to use either one of those two questions. All right, let's move on to these images right here. So here are some images to kind of get you an idea of what we're talking about here. So activation energy. So if you see this boulder right here, somebody's trying to push it up. You need energy to push it up and then gravity will take over and it will kind of continue. Similar to this kind of graph right here where you have reactants and it needs some sort of energy to get it started and usually then it continues by itself until the products are formed. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to. If not, let's move on to number two. So one of the things that can influence activation energy is increasing the temperature of the reactants. It can cause the atoms to move around more, and which can also cause the uh, reaction to be more energetic. So in this image right here, you see a glow stick. Remember, glow sticks are a form of exothermic chemical reactions between usually a chemical called luminol. But you see this uh, glow stick sitting in a beaker of warm water. You see how it's glowing brightly. And here's a, a glow stick in a beaker of cold water and you see it's a lot less bright it's a lot more dim it doesn't mean that this glow stick and this glow stick have different amounts of energy this one will the reaction is slower so it will last longer but you get less light and this one because the water is warmer the reaction is a lot brighter but it's going to die out a lot faster too so they both will have in the end the amount of the same amount of energy just at different rates go ahead and come up with a question for two and let's move on to three number three Oops. An increase in concentration or amount can increase the rate of reaction as well. Let's look at a picture. So concentration is how much do you have in a solution. For example, when you have a lot of ice and a little bit of, let's say, soda, it's very diluted. But when you have all soda and maybe just one ice cube, it's very concentrated. What, when you're using solutions, you're mixing solutions to do chemical reactions, the more concentrated it is, usually the more reactive it's going to be. All right, go ahead and come up with a question for three, and then we'll move on to four. Ready? Let's move on to the last idea for number four. Enzymes, especially in living creatures like such as us humans, enzymes are molecules with certain shapes, and they can guide the reactants and increase the amount of a chemical reaction. And there's a small picture right here. We'll get back to it in a minute. I do want you to draw it today, so if you need to zoom in or pause it to draw it, I'll be looking for that when I grade your notebook next time. But let's look at a bigger picture, and then we'll come back to this little picture. So here in this picture, you have a raw potato and a cooked potato. And then you put hydrogen peroxide. You can try this at home if you want. If you put hydrogen peroxide in equal amounts, same temperature, you're going to see if you have a cooked potato versus a raw potato, the raw one's going to fizz up more. It's going to be a stronger chemical reaction than the cooked one. The cooked one, you might not see any bubbles at all. And the reason why is because of enzymes. Enzymes are these living uh, particles or molecules that are in the raw potato. When you heat it up, they, they get destroyed. But in the cooked potato, there's not as many of these enzymes. The enzymes guide the reactants. For example, here are the reactants. It guides them to where they need to connect so a chemical reaction can happen. And then you have a, a new product. So again, enzymes are kind of molecules that guide the reaction. They are not living. I made a mistake. I said they were living. They're actually not living, but they're in living things, is which what I meant. Go ahead and draw these uh, this small picture right here, or you can rewind the video to see the bigger picture. Just like always, don't forget your summary and your advanced question. Have a good day.